When all you're interested in is seeing the president indicted, then yeah, that investigation is not going to turn out well from a bipartisan standpoint. And you never got. That was Republican Congressman Trey Gowdy pushing back on Intel Committee Democrats who are accusing Republicans of obstructing the Russia investigation. Joining me now, Democratic Congressman Denny Heck of Washington. Always good to bring you on and uh, get your insights into things on the Intel Committee, half of which the questions you can't answer that I ask you. But on this one, Denny, uh, uh, do you think that Trey Gowdy was the one to push back the hardest, as he is saying, on Steve Bannon? Would you agree with him on that? I would agree that Trey Gowdy pushed Steve Bannon and only Steve Bannon pretty far, uh, but many of the Republicans did. In fact, because, as you will recall, Steve Bannon was a man without a country during that period of time. Mm -hmm. The Trump administration had uh, kicked him to the curb, and they were more than willing to pile on. But they weren't willing to be anywhere near as tough on a lot of the other witnesses, most notably Corey Lewandowski, who took some of the same approach that Mr. Bannon did, and the Republicans let it slide. Hmm. I want to play for you something that uh, your colleague, Congressman Quigley, told me a bit earlier and get your take on this. Take a listen. And let the Republicans release those transcripts. We'll learn them at least. 11 Trump associates communicating with the Russians on an ongoing basis. This is just the report that you release when you tank the investigation from the beginning, when the Republicans worked in concert with the White House to obstruct the investigation. You know, when he said 11 people were working uh, continuously back and forth with, with the Russians. I, I was taken aback by that number. So I'm curious if you can elaborate a bit more on the transcripts and what they're going to show. So actually my count was a little higher, but I did it in my head. It's at least double digits, Alex. First of all, let me say that this isn't a report uh, of an investigation because in order to have a report on an investigation, you must have had an investigation. And we really didn't. Because in order to have an investigation, you must be willing to do follow-up. And the majority simply was not. This would be a little bit like apprehending a suspect in a crime, asking if they did it. They said, no, I was with John that night. And you refused to pick up the phone or go see John and confirm hmm. it. Time and time again, we requested that certain documents be subpoenaed, and they've refused time and time again. We requested that certain witnesses, additional witnesses, be brought, brought forward to bear out the truth or lack thereof of what one of the witnesses had told us, and they refused. So this is not a report on an investigation. It's a non-investigation. And yes, the transcripts should come out. In fact, Chairman Conway said at one point, absolutely they should come out. And then when we attempted to move that they do in fact be released, they rejected it. So I believe, as does Mike Quigley, that when those transcripts come out, they're going to be eye-opening for the American public. You think even in this hyper-partisan time that the American public will be able to read these and not nitpick, cherry-pick and say, okay, now we see what, you know, Denny Heck is saying. I think a lot of people are going to be uh, cherry-picking the facts to support their pre-existing ideas or biases. That's just the nature of the beast. But yeah, Alex, if you wanted any more evidence about hi how hyper-partisan the world has become, you need to look back no further than the shameful and unceremonious firing of the chaplain of the U.S. House last week. Congressman Quigley also told me that the entire investigation is creeping slowly closer to the White House. First of all, how is that happening? Do you agree? And if that's the case, how has that not come out? So I think eventually it will come out. I think this week was a bit of a watershed in some regards. <clears throat> when the judge in California stayed the uh, continuation of the Stormy Daniels case, and in so doing indicated that he wanted, he, he, he rationalized that decision on the basis that he thought it was likely that the president's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, would be indicted. Mm -hmm. we have, we've officially crossed the line, Alex. Hmm. The Trump administration is now among the most scandal-ridden in American history, and I believe that the history books will someday write it up as such and rank him up there or down there, depending on your perspective, with Grant and Harding and the like. We've not heard from Cohen himself yet. I mean, that could be really the, the turning point as well. So I have suggested that we ought to construct a Michael Cohen index. And the point of that index would be the number of years of imprisonment he's facing before he flips. Uh, and place your bets. My bet is on somewhere between 10 or 15, uh, because with good time served, it might actually be less than that. 
Uh, but we'll see how many years of imprisonment he is facing if he's indicted, as the judge indicates now is likely, and what it would take, therefore, for him to flip. Hmm. I want to play for you what the president said about the Russian lawyer, Natalia Veselinskaya, the one who's at the heart of that whole June 2016 <clears throat> Trump terror meeting, because she told my colleague, as you know, Richard Engel, that she's an informant for the Russian government. And here's what the president said about it last night. Have you heard about the lawyer? For a year, a woman lawyer, she was like, oh, I know nothing, no, no. Now, all of a sudden, she supposedly is involved with government. You know why? If, it, if she did that, because... Putin and the group said, you know, this Trump is killing us. Why don't you say that you're involved with government so that we can go and make their life in the United States even more chaotic? I'm not sure I understand what he's saying there. What did you hear in that explanation? Uh, confusion, chaos. But it's the old 3D movie we've talked about before, Alex. Distract deceive and deflect uh, it look we're truly in an Orwellian state here where uh, war is peace uh, slavery is freedom uh, it doesn't matter what the president says about this he has this kind of obsessive need to believe that he's waging a public relations campaign when in fact what Bob Mueller is engaged in is a criminal investigation hmm. and no amount of spinning on his part is going to alter the trajectory of due diligence that Bob Mueller and his team are pursuing. Yeah, that's a good point there. Um, also, uh, the president singled out last night Democrats, uh, notably Maxine Waters being one who've openly called for his impeachment. Are the Democrats going to take action if they sweep the midterms? So what Adam Schiff, who is the ranking member of the Select Committee on Intelligence, has indicated is that if there is a change in the majority, and should he become the chair of the Intelligence Committee, that some of uh, the unattended and uh, non-pursued avenues of the investigation uh, would be taken up again. I think that's appropriate. All right. Uh, and, and very quickly, I want to get back to the, the firing of the House chaplain there, Patrick uh, Conroy. You know, not only Democrats like yourself are demanding that Speaker Ryan explain all this, but there are some Republicans also angry by this decision. And I know your op-ed, you wrote why this really hit home for you, given your friendship with Father Conroy. What do you think this was all about, really? So let me first say, let me first say that I am grievously disappointed about this decision for three reasons, the first of which you alluded to. Uh, Father Pat is probably one of my best friends in the other mm. Washington. And my friend was treated very, very poorly. And frankly, I'm mad as hell about it. Uh, secondly, there was an incredible abuse of process here. The chaplain is the chaplain of the U.S. House. He's not the speaker's chaplain. The speaker recommends, but the House affirms. The House was not involved in this decision whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Moreover, Father Pat wasn't provided any uh, opportunity to discuss with the speaker what concerns, if any, that he would brought, had brought forward. The speaker really didn't offer an explanation. And thirdly, perhaps most importantly, for God's sakes, literally and figuratively, if we can't leave out of our political food fight the people who tend to the spiritual needs of the House as an institution and its members, what have we become? Yeah, I guess I'll just uh, say an amen at the end of that. Thank you very much, Democratic Congressman Denny Heck of Washington. Always good to see you, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. Coming up next, the threat of impeachment. How will it shape President Trump's approach?